Hello and welcome to Cold Outreach Success Stories, where we interview regular business people just like you who've had great success on cold outreach on email and other channels. So we go deep into their process with hot tips around personalization, messaging, targeting, so that you can take away some tactics to use in role in your cold outreach starting tomorrow. Today we have Dana from Strategic Calls. Welcome to the show, Dana. Thank you, Saras. Thank you very much for having me. Awesome. So what do you guys do and how do you make money? Awesome. Okay, so here at Strategic Calls, um, we specialize in providing lead generation strategy development and implementation using phone calls as our primary outreach resource. So think of us as experienced consultants that actually do the work. Okay, mm -hmm. or another way to look at it is we are an alternative to hiring an inside sales team. So you can outsource to us. And the reason we choose the phone as our primary um, resource for outreach is because, because if done correctly, Sarif, no other outreach method provides the balance of efficiency and effectiveness better than making a call. So mm -hmm. we work closely with each of our clients to understand their unique needs and to develop and um, implement and continually improve a customized strategy to help them achieve their specific goals. That, that sounds really good. So what kind of clients do you work with? So our ideal client is um, a business. Um, we're all business to business that requires a consultative sale. Mm -hmm. um, a, a business that has limited brand recognition and mm -hmm. typically requires a longer sales cycle. So our target market is very specific. Um, mm -hmm. In that also an ideal client for us is a client with an offering where a trigger event um, mm -hmm. provides a window of opportunity. So let me give you a couple examples. Sure. Avidicare is one of our clients. It's mm -hmm. a Swedish-based company. It manufactures an innovative ventilation system for operating rooms. Mm -hmm. And for this client, the sales cycle could take years, depending mm -hmm. on when the interest was identified. Yeah. Another one of our clients, the IFO group, provides consulting and management services for catastrophic safety and risk events. Mm -hmm. For IFO, it's imperative that they're front of mind when an mm -hmm. event occurs that requires their services. So in both cases, it requires experience, skill, professional persistence, just to secure that qualified discovery meeting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and then in terms of obtaining their data, um, mm -hmm. It's very collaborative. We collaborate, we collaborate closely with our clients. Um, we custom curate every list depending mm -hmm. on how well they understand their target market and what they've already tried. This is how we establish a starting point. And mm -hmm. then curation of a quality list to us is an ever evolving process. Mm -hmm. so is that what you're you know, looking for? Yeah, I mean, I appreciate that. It's not, it's not easy to um, you know, work in industries that have such a long sales cycle, because even after the initial interest, if it's, you know, that long, it might take a lot of work to just stay top of mind, right? Right, right. And our process is designed to address those needs of those types of clients. Got it. Makes a ton of sense. Okay, so let's get deeper into the process then. What does yep. that look like? So is it multi-channel or is it mostly call heavy? What does that process look like? Okay, so our outreach project, uh, process actually has a name. Okay, mm -hmm. it's called the Jumpstart Outbound Calling Process. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it was developed and continues to evolve over the last 15 years. Okay, so our process is based on practice, not just mm -hmm. theory, and a lot of practice, a lot of actual doing it. So the Jumpstart process is a lead generation method that uses outbound calling is the primary communication vehicle strategically mm -hmm. supplemented with emails. Okay. Nice. So jumpstart aims to balance efficiency and effectiveness in all areas. Okay. Some approaches are very effective, but not efficient. Some are efficient, not effective. Some are efficient and effective in some areas and not others, maybe research, but not outreach. Ours right. is designed 
to balance efficiency and effectiveness in all areas. And this process allows for the agent to start making calls. This is the beauty of it, right? Mm -hmm. It starts, it, it allows the agent to start making calls effectively right away. Okay, because of the structure and the design and the cadence of it. And then it allows for relevant knowledge to let them become mm -hmm. better and better on the calls to evolve over time. So we refer to this as layered learning. So right. our, our agents, our calling agents are highly. Got it. Very interesting. Um, so. Let's say you use this jumpstart methodology, you get started with calling. How do you layer in emails? Is it like, do you have a specific cadence structure that, hey, we'll do three calls followed by 10 emails over a you know, one month window? What does that look like? Yeah, we, we have strong opinions on our cadence. Okay. Um, so we have what we call the jumpstart cadence, mm -hmm. which is three consecutive days of outreach mm -hmm. and it's phone call, email, phone call, phone call, email, and nice. that's the cadence. Got and it. the messaging series is designed specifically, it's research-based and time-tested mm -hmm. to make that effective. So the process needs to be followed the way it's designed. Got it, very interesting. Okay, let's get deeper into the personalization aspect. So how, what does the script look like? You know, How do you design the scripts and how do you make sure that the cold call scripts or the emails that you're sending out are personalized to each company that you're reaching out to? What does that process look like? Okay, so remember everything we do in every area is designed to balance efficiency and effectiveness. So mm -hmm. at this beginning stage of the sales process, it's less mm -hmm. about product knowledge, it's mm -hmm. less about customization, right? Mm -hmm. And our process always targets the highest level stakeholder with a vested interest in our message, right? So because of that, we can, we can create messaging that resonates with everyone we're calling mm -hmm. for the most part, right? Um, but, again, that balance, we can't be customizing something for everyone at this phase of the sales process. Once right. you move further down, of course, the further you move down, the more custom things need to become. But right now you can think you have the best target with the best title, with the best direct phone number, and you mm -hmm. can spend a day customizing a message for him and find out he's just not gonna talk to you. He's got a <laughs> screen personality, right? So we, the, our, our jumpstart process by, by design takes more into consideration than anybody could possibly imagine that hasn't done this. Mm -hmm. to the level, to the degree, in the amount that we've done it. You, you just, you got to do the work to obtain the kind of knowledge we have. There's no shortcuts. Understood. That makes a ton of sense. And it sounds like th I completely agree with, uh, you know, your uh, the thesis around, you know, you should not personalize early on into the cadence. But once you start getting, you know, the initial response, then personalization takes on a bigger role, right? A lot of our, you know, viewers, I talk to a lot of them, um, in our you know community as well and this is a very common mistake like you spend a ton of time personalizing early on into the funnel and then you just don't hear back from them right so that's a very common mistake that i'm seeing um, you know new new sales people to do yeah absolutely i agree with you all right interesting so speaking of mistakes um what are some of the mistakes that you guys did once you you know and in the initial stages of when you started, you know, setting up these campaigns for clients? Um, it's been a while. Not that we don't make mistakes, right? But the big ones, the big game changing mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. um, the When we started introducing the jumpstart process in the beginning, all we offered was a one week jumpstart process and that's where the name jumpstart came from it was designed to jumpstart the lead generation funnel in one week mm -hmm. right and what happened was our process was effective and they saw results so quickly right mm -hmm. but then i didn't have anything else to offer them we're done in a week because i, I didn't have the bandwidth or the resources um or a strategy really to take it beyond the week. I so see. my initial 
my initial idea, and this was years and years ago, but my initial idea was we would jumpstart them and then they would continue where we left off, mm -hmm. right? Because right. there's so much value we brought to them in just one week. But what I learned is people don't, uh, people don't know how important, uh, maybe you can help me with this, but the consistency is critical, right? You can't yeah. start and stop when you're doing lead yeah. generation. You need consistency. Um, yeah. And I, I think especially, well, unless you do the work and you put the effort like we do every mm -hmm. single day, year after year after year, you learn how important, how valuable consistency is because then you don't have to restart or reinvent the wheel. You can build from what, where you left off. So to answer your question, my biggest mistake was when I originally developed the jumpstart process, I thought it was going to be, we could sell this one week, get people started yeah. and they'd go off and do it themselves. They need someone to do it for them. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I hear you. I mean, especially in complex strategic sales, right? With such long sales cycle where, um, you know, you can get started in a week. You know, it's like a shock to the system, right? You're jump starting the process, but then you need that continuous, you know, um, activity so that the deal stay warm, your pipeline keeps growing. Otherwise, you know, you're just going to, you know, start missing your sales targets very soon. Totally agree. Awesome. Thinking about the future now, what are some of the things that you're excited about trying to improve your process? So where we are right now, um, not that anything's ever perfect, right? Mm -hmm. But we're yeah. right now where we're where we need to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're, we have a great team. We have a great process. We have great documentation. We could, probably could use a little work on the documentation. Okay. <laughs> but really... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can always use to work on the documentation. Okay. But um, what we're excited about is we recently introduced our jumpstart training series. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that businesses who have their own sales team, okay, but would like more structure, mm -hmm. would like a, a clearer, regular view into what's happening without sacrificing mm -hmm motivation, creativity, the stuff that we need from salespeople, right? Right. So, um, so we've introduced our training series so that we can teach companies with their own sales team the benefits of this process. So mm -hmm. what we're excited to see is how our, our service translates and scales as a training offering. Awesome. I'm, I'm excited about that. I mean, that's one of the things that um, people struggle with. If they if they have sales reps, sometimes it's just about, um, you know, following a structured process that's proven elsewhere and just see how that completely changes the, you know, effectiveness of their own sales team. Right. Right. So that was it from my end. That's all the questions I have. Thanks for coming on, Dana. Really hey. fun to see you on. Thank you so much for having me. This was a pleasure and an honor. Thank you. So that's all the time we have, folks. Uh, I really enjoyed the episode. I hope you did too. Please subscribe, like, share, comment, whatever you can to spread the word out about Cold Audit Success Stories so more people can enjoy and learn from the show. All right. That's all, folks. Bye-bye.